more about the Lincoln Fire and Rescue Department. Greetings. My name is Steve Joel, Superintendent of Lincoln Public Schools. Here, fire station number seven in our great city of Lincoln, located around Cotner and, and A Street. This is the fire station that was the first responder to that devastating fire that we had on Memorial Day that took away Lincoln Public Schools district office. You know, the cooperation and partnerships that we have with so many of our, of our great agencies in Lincoln really make our jobs a lot easier. And I think it's fitting that we we're taping from here today because school starts in about three weeks. And it has been a interesting summer to say the least, but it's been a summer of great fulfillment as well. We're in the process of rebuilding LPSDO. In fact, a upcoming school board meeting will be spending time thinking about and looking at essential criteria. What do we need to build to get our jobs done? And, where should we build it? And we'll be reaching out to the community for that. We're expecting about 36,000 students enrolled in a couple of weeks, give or take 100 or maybe even two. As you recall, I've spoken often about the last two years. We've grown about 1,000 students per year. Dr. Moore has estimated with, uh, with, with, with her grafting that uh, this will be uh, about 650 this year. But we also, uh, we also know that Lincoln's a vibrant community. There's a lot of great things happening and we would anticipate that we'll have more children. People want to move to Lincoln, and a big reason they want to move to Lincoln is because of the public schools, and also the quality of life as evidenced by the great fire department, police department that we have. We haven't missed a beat. We missed a couple of days right after the fire as we were trying to sort out what, uh, what, what we had to do to, to get ourselves up and, and going. Community reached out in ways that uh, are just absolutely awe-inspiring. Uh, lots of opportunities to, uh, to take advantage of workspace. At one time we had our, our people, uh, about uh, a couple hundred of them, that were located in about nine facilities around the city. That's all been doable, it's been all workable. Kudos and, and my personal gratitude to every LPSDO displaced member that uh, really reached down and, and, and under great personal loss was able to get themselves focused in a way that uh, school's going to be opening again in three weeks and it's going to look very, very normal. Um, Dawes Middle School is a project that is, uh, that is going to be uh, opened up. We've got a new principal, Angie Zababwa, that has been working uh, all summer as all of our principals and, and uh, a lot of our teachers have been working this year. Uh, we're excited about the opening of Dawes as a standalone middle school. Of course, uh, Goodrich is going back to the original location uh, having had a, uh, an IAQ project. Uh, Hawthorne School is just about finished. We've had some, uh, some members of our team, uh, special, uh, special education and, and a couple of other programs that have already begun the move-in process. Uh, we'll be utilizing the old Bryan School for a while. Um, it's been a summer of just a lot of planning and a lot of, uh, uh, just a lot of get gearing up for what we think is going to be an exciting year with a minimum of um, feeling sorry for ourselves. And I think that really marks our, our school system in a way that, that I know our community appreciates, but, but also is, is our legacy. Through our, all of our lives, we all have challenges. It's how we respond to those challenges really defines us and sets the stage for the next generation. We're all about educating kids. We're all about the highest possible quality of education for all of our children. We're going to be rolling out a strategic plan that I think is going to get us focused on the things that really matter the most. And we're going to continue to partner with our great uh, community partners and our great citizens and our parents. And this is going to be the most exciting year in Lincoln Public Schools in a long time. It's only fitting that uh, I have an opportunity now to meet with two of the leaders of Lincoln Fire Station Number 7, a fire station that responded in a very valiant and, and gallant manner on the night of the devastating LPSDO fire. Um, these are folks that, uh, that work every day to provide for our safety and our security and um, just uh, can't say enough about the tremendous work that, uh, that they did that night.
With me is Interim Fire Chief John Huff and, and Captain Jay Adams. So um, I, I welcome to the show. Welcome to Lincoln Public Schools. Thank you for, for all that, uh, that you and your team have done. And uh, let's start with just a real simple question. What, uh, you know, what, what, what exactly is the, uh, is the priority work here? Well, uh, Fire Station 7, like our other uh, facilities, uh, uh, is, is geared towards responding to emergencies in their assigned area. Um, Station 7 was the first uh, responding unit, uh, the engine and the truck here, um, and our medic unit on the night of the LPS fire. But they typically do that uh, routinely throughout uh, the day uh, during their, their normal shifts. Thanks, John. You know, um, I, I remember that night. Uh, it, it's kind of like everything else. It's big in a life experience. Uh, it was very stormy. It was very windy. Uh, there were there was smoke billowing out of the out of the building. And you know, your guys and and gals showed up, uh, Jay, and and just went to work. And I was just so impressed. I know the entire community was with uh, the hours that they put in and and how they wore this so personally with respect to you know, trying to preserve the building. So kind of talk about uh, what it takes to be a firefighter and, you know, why, uh, why Lincoln's so blessed and so fortunate to have such quality folks. Well, in the city of Lincoln, you're blessed with a lot of excellent people. To, to become a firefighter, the best thing I could tell somebody is to get a good education because there's so many things that you need to know. You need to know the weight of water. You need to know friction loss. You need to know your EMS. There's just continuous... Uh, education that you got to keep continuing getting in and so it's safe to say uh, a lot of these uh, young folks are uh, LPSDO graduates yes I would say a lot of them are but there's there's people from all over the country we've got uh, people I know here, here on the job from California uh, there's a lot of people from outside the county uh, I live down by Beatrice and so so yeah it's quite a variety of everybody well, thanks, Jay. And uh, how many uh, how many how many folks are employed here at this particular station? At this station, let's see, there's four on the engine, two on a medic unit, and four on a truck. And there's three different shifts. You know, a little claim to fame. Uh, I, I was in the Wilbur uh, Fire Department for a number of years, and you know, I have to be totally honest because somebody from from uh, Wilbur is going to be watching this. I never did make a fire. You know, I just but I showed up at all the meetings. I went to the practice. I got certified on the on the pumper truck, uh, but but I lived a long way out of town, and and I and I hadn't I hadn't gotten to the point where I was eligible to have my own little radio that blasts you out of bed. Um, do, do do the fire folks here do they maintain a residence, uh, a place to sleep at night? Yeah, here here in the station, there's a bedroom. This is a we're fortunate at this station. We have individual bedrooms, and so we're here for 24 hours. We come here and eat breakfast, lunch, and supper, and we go to bed here. We work out here. This is our second family. We're here for 24 hours. Our shift starts at seven o'clock in the morning and goes till seven o'clock the next day. Wow, that's a lot of a lot, a lot of time together. John, what what is take us through just just quickly uh, a 911 call. You, you get a call in. Uh, let's use the LPSDO fire as an example. Um, that fire came in while I was just I'm, I'm sure still asleep. Sure. Um, when people in Lincoln um, need help, they will dial 911, and that's been implemented in Lincoln 911 uh, for more than 30 years. Um, when the call is received, a call taker will take the information. They'll ask the calling party, what's the nature of the emergency? Uh, a series of questions. If it's uh, for law enforcement, they will deploy uh, police, uh, county sheriff, and so on. If it's a uh, medical emergency or a fire call, uh, they will uh, activate our uh, resources. Uh, medical emergencies in Lincoln will receive a, uh, the closest available ambulance and the closest available uh, engine company. That's a standard response. Um, the uh, fire calls will, we have a standard uh, complement of uh, units that respond. Uh, a, a fire incident, if it's a uh, alarm sounding, uh, gets a lesser level of response than one if it's uh, one that's called in as a fire in progress. So depending on the, what the caller tells us, that's how we, re we react to it and we respond. Once our first arriving unit um, gets on location, then they will uh, give direction to incoming units. Uh, the night of the district office uh, fire, um, our first arriving unit uh, went to the uh, north entrance door. Uh, they uh, met the LPS employee there who went back with them into uh, the area where the fire was, and obviously uh, from there uh, called for more resources. Well, it, it, it really was an amazing response. and. 
You know, again, looking back on that day, uh, that night actually, uh, from the time that I received the phone call and, and got up there, the weather was terrible. Um, just the uh, just just the attitudes and the resolve and the commitment on the part of your folks was was truly humbling. And and I, you know, I just want our public to know that um, in addition to risking their their lives and their own personal safety. Um, boy, they cared. I got the impression that, that your guys, Jay, cared as much about our building as we did that night. And where, where that really was born out was the next day when, when I went out to the, to the site and realized it was gone. Um, and, and they were sitting on, on um, uh, just sitting outside the trucks, guys and gals, just the epitome of exhaustion. And, you know, I thanked them as best I could, but they'd worked all night long to try to save the building. So, you know, I know, I know you're proud of your guys, and um, I want you to know that we are too. And, and um, we are so blessed and so fortunate in Lincoln to have partnerships with the fire department and the police department and all the other agencies, because without, without your great people and your great work, uh, we wouldn't be the school system that we are. So thanks so much for letting us do the shoot down here and, and also for, uh, for all you do to make our city safe and for LPS uh, 36,000 students. So appreciate it very much, gentlemen. Right now he's putting on his uh, boots and bunker pants. Uh, it's three layer bunker pants. It's got a thermal, an outside shell to protect this, a thermal shell and a shell to protect us from uh, steam and water. And then he's got a head sock that'll cover most of his skin when he has the mask on. Covers his head, ears, his coat, okay. which is the same construction as the pants. And this here, here is the uh, air bottle. It's not oxygen, it's air, compressed air. Keep talking, Joy. Now we got the mask. Pull your hood down. Pull your hood back. Down. Hold your head. Hold your head. No, no. Back up. Back up. Keep in mind we gotta do this in one minute. Okay, now slip that on. Okay, now grab these and pull them back and get you a tight seal. Now he's putting on his mask and tighten it down for the seal. Tight seal, then you gotta put this back over. Head sock back over to cover any exposed skin. And now we'll hook in the air. Take a deep breath. There you go. Oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a helmet. pounds with everything on tank, wow. gear, everything. Extra 90 pounds. And then this is a pass device. This is for if a firefighter gets in trouble. If you stay still, an alarm will go off. And that'll tell other firefighters where to locate you. Wow. A minute or less, huh? One minute. One minute. Turn out here, one minute for the SCBA. So two minutes to leave. Ten minutes tall, and then they're on the truck and going. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Do you wear a jacket under this in, in the wintertime? No. Is this, this is warming up, right? That was in a sweatshirt. Yeah, warm yeah, up that's now. it, yeah. Most of the time you'll see, like, the drivers, which I am, will show up with nothing on because it's easier to drive instead of having all this on. So we'll get out and get dressed outside the rig here and here's in the back of the rig. Wow. 90 pounds. Let's get you guys in shape. Yeah. Who's going to have to take this off? Pull your head sock back over your head and just lift off the mask. There you go. Get you the top. I'm sorry. Pull the sock off. There you go. 
Well, I've got to go change clothes. Um, 90 pounds of, uh, of equipment. I can't imagine what that's like, uh, but yet I feel really safe and secure in this. And uh, to, to know that, that, that our firefighters can, can get into these, this, this entire outfit in a minute or less, and it took me about 42 minutes. It's a good thing that I'm not employed by the fire department. Um, but it, right now, really warm, really, really muggy. Um, the oxygen was a major help. I mean, once I, I was wondering how so, wow, they hold their breath the whole time in the fire, fighting fires? Um, no, very good. And I, honestly, um, uh, maybe you feel like this too in the summertime. I can't wait to get out of this uniform right now. Um, so thank you very much for the demonstration, but uh, great equipment. Uh, again, 90 pounds, and boy, I can't imagine uh, what, what you're missing. So um, more power to you guys, particularly when you're in a hurry trying to get in the building. And then just kind of okay, then hold it with two hands once I open it. You can, yeah. What, since it's wrapped yeah, like this, it shouldn't it shouldn't push back too much. Okay. All right, now let it just kind of. If you want to move your knee up and on, I'm gonna move this foot over, and I'm gonna straighten that out. Okay. okay. All right. And now, there you go. But it's not gonna be. I mean, I, it's, I'm not gonna be if able to lift can, it up uh, in the air. Maybe we can push this foot hose a little bit forward, and that's going to give it. That's going to give you a little bit more room to pull up. Okay. And get right on your butt. Sit right on your butt on it, just like you're riding a horse. Just sit my butt on it. Yep. Sit your butt on it. Just there, there you, you go. go. Now, just like that. All right. There you go. Now, Where's the fire? We're going to use that sign up over there. You ready? Yep. Okay. That's just bleeding it out. So you can go ahead and open it up a little more. All right, let's go all the way. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. All the way. Actually, it could go up another 50 feet. It should open up a little more. There you go. There you go. That's a lot of water. It's a lot of pressure. That ought to be good for most fires. With these tips, we can actually take the top one off to deliver more gallons per minute. Oops. Okay. And now he's increasing the pressure depending on how much water we need, where we need to reach. Yeah. What's the... Uh... There you go. Wow. What's the range? I mean, how far is that? We are... I think we're hitting the sign. So, that okay. is... That's quite a ways. <laughs> You know, I'm glad I don't do this for a living, but I'll tell you, that, uh, that's pretty powerful, and this really has been a childhood fantasy of mine. You know, thank God it's practice as opposed to real, but got a great appreciation for our firefighters with the equipment that they wear, uh, the equipment that they use, and just uh, the training that is required for this position is... Well, it's, it's very, very difficult, and uh, they, have to be, they have to be learners. So, uh, boy, what a great experience. Thank you very much for your assistance. And, you know, interesting enough, the kickback on this was, I could see where you better be in shape, because if you're not in shape, this hose is going to get you. And, uh, and if you're not in shape, the, uh, the equipment that you're wearing is going to get you, 90 pounds worth of equipment. So, um, wow, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad it was practice. All right. Good to get up? Yep. The action pose. All different kinds of settings for all different kinds of fires. Lots of options. A lot of range, a lot of water. Not near the pushback on this particular uh, hosing unit. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your continued commitment. Thank you to the, to the great folks of Fire Station Number 7 for, uh, for allowing us to do this and for allowing a, 
uh, an aging superintendent to, uh, to, to fulfill a, a childhood fantasy. It's been an absolute blast getting to uh, climb the ladder and, and play with the fire hose and, and to wear the gear, 90 pounds worth of gear that, uh, quite frankly, is, uh, is a real testament to their inner fortitude and their strength, too. So with that, we'll sign off and, and look forward to a great school year. Thank you. This has been a presentation of Lincoln Public Schools. A monthly programming guide may be found at www.lps.org.